Uh, so hi everyone, uh, I'm going to discuss with you today uh, and share a bit about um, our approach to infusing empathy into conversational AI and then how we integrate that into Raza. So a little bit about COCO. Uh, COCO is a spin out uh, from the University of Washington that provides telenursing and virtual therapy platform for family caregivers, uh, supporting their needs through ornament on-demand caregiving support and interactive health and wellness uh, counseling. This platform leverages state-of-the-art research and affective intelligence to enhance empathy in both our bot and our human agents. Uh, so through this talk, I'll explain what is affective intelligence, how can this technology be applied to generate empathetic dialogue, and how we integrate that with Raza. Uh, so before we get started, I want to make sure we have a shared understanding of the terminology used in the remainder of the presentation. Um, so there's a few terms here. The first is natural language understanding, or NLU, which is the process by which a conversational agent understands meaning from text and represents it in a way that uh, allows for computation by the conversational agent. Uh, the prevailing method for this representation has been intense. Uh, for example, a user says, I'm looking for a restaurant, and then the intent of the user may be represented as find restaurant. Slots are the means by which a request can be fulfilled. For example, the user may say um, that they're looking for Peruvian food, and in this case, Peruvian would fill the slot cuisine. Uh, the state tracker is then the final NLU component, which keeps track of all of this information over multiple turns of the dialogue. Uh, the dialogue policies role is then from the state tr tracker uh, to predict the best next action for the conversational agent to take. So in this case, that might be to suggest a restaurant. And then the natural language generation component, or NLG, uh, then converts the action into a response. So for example, they might say, I found a few Peruvian places near you. So let's move on to the topic of the talk, empathy. I'd first like to differentiate between two types of empathy. The first is affective empathy, uh, which refers to the ability uh, to experience how someone else may feel in response to an event. Uh, this type of empathy can result in caregiver or provider burnout, known as empathy fatigue. Uh, on the other hand, we have cognitive empathy, which only uh, requires an ability to reason about how events are likely to affect another person's mental state. And a deficit in this type of reasoning um, it results in a number of uh, social communicative disorders, which highlights the need for this type of reasoning and dialogue, as well as potential uh, application areas for this research. Uh, so since machines are currently unable to feel emotions and lack the embodiment required for shared experience, we'll focus exclusively on cognitive empathy for this talk. Uh, so let's begin with the status quo. Uh, for a long time, chatbots have relied on sentiment analysis to understand a user's emotional state, and respond using rule-based policies. I provide an example here uh, that I'll use throughout the next few slides of a scheduled bot check-in where the user indicates that they are working late and aren't, uh, weren't able to connect with their child's doctor's office to submit uh, some paperwork. A sentiment analysis component within an NLU pipeline would assign a score uh, between negative one and one to this utterance. Um, then a, a Custom action uh, might uh, apply a threshold policy that defines sentiment uh, be below negative 0.5 as negative. Uh, and this information is then dispatched to the natural language generation component, which would result in a response like, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, as you can see, this technique is incredibly coarse and results in inauthentic responses that fail to improve users' perception of being heard and may actually end up doing more harm than good. Uh, and this method is clearly unsuitable for mental health applications uh, like COCO. And so we see button selection as a common method for gaining a more fine-grained understanding of a user's emotional state. And this method bypasses the need for NLU, as the buttons carry a payload that directly informs the dialogue policy of the user's intent, uh, thus allowing the, the system to directly map that into, into a response in a more scripted fashion. And so it's unsurprising that uh, there's been a large amount of interest recently in fine tuning transformer based language models to detect emotions directly from text. This spares the user from having to 
uh, engaged through a, uh, a button interface and allows for more natural user experience. Here we're revisiting that prior example. Um, and we see that the motion detection component uh, can detect that the user may be tired. Uh, and so uh, it might see that we should recommend a stretching exercise uh, to help the person reboost their energy. And uh, we're able to show some empathy and understanding by uh, letting the user know that the system has understood that they're tired. And that's why uh, we're suggesting this type of exercise. And so this is a, a much more natural interaction and it provides a good baseline for companies interested in incorporating empathy into their dialogue systems. Now, uh, slide aside, uh, until recently, the only way to train a dialogue system within a production ready framework has been through intents. Unfortunately, this is a reductionist approach uh, that results in a large amount of information being lost and requires significant resources to develop the schema which most often ends up failing in real world applications anyway. Uh, so within the last, past month, Raza released uh, version 2.2, which includes an experimental feature that allows for a hybrid approach uh, that can incorporate conversations in free text form uh, and learn directly from that. This eliminates the need to necessarily devise an intent schema, or at the very least ensures that additional information gets passed from the NLU uh, through to the dialogue management component. Uh, and you can read more about this uh, by scanning the QR code here. Um, as with intents, uh, we see mental states as also not falling neatly into categories. And by limiting our understanding of a user's utterance to only a single emotion or predefined set of emotions, we lose a lot of important information. Um, so in the prior example, uh, we want to acknowledge that the user may have other priorities. Um, here, uh, Coco acknowledges that the user has feelings of uh, being busy uh, and wanting to finish their work and go home. With this information, Coco then offers to reconnect with the user in the evening after they've had their dinner uh, to ensure a better user experience. Um, and in this way, the user doesn't feel rushed and they're able to spend that time uh, uh, with Coco that, that they need to complete their session. Uh, from the ML perspective, uh, the task is given the current user um, utterance and the dialogue history uh, to predict uh, those sets of states. And so uh, that's a, we represent these as, as triples. So that is uh, what is the type of mental state? So in this case, it's feel. Uh, what is the state? So overwhelmed. And then who is it attributed to? So in the dialogue, there might be multiple people mentioned, uh, the caregiver, their child, their spouse. And so we want to attribute these uh, mental states to uh, the right person. And uh, so we do this not only for you know, the feeling, but also, well, what are the other motivations of the user um, and to get a better understanding of their situation. Now, uh, we've seen large advances in tasks that rely on natural language processing as a result of uh, large language models. Uh, but it's important to understand that language models are trained to predict the next word in a sentence uh, based on a distribution of words in a training data set. Uh, Transformer-based language models continue to learn from data far beyond the limits of older models, such as LSTMs and CNNs, which reached a plateau with uh, once there was larger amounts of data. Second, uh, these models have uh, supported advancement in a variety of tasks through transfer learning, uh, where the models need less data now to achieve the same goals uh, as, as previously uh, by leveraging that large amount of pre-training. However, there's still a lot of information uh, and knowledge that's not explicitly stated in text. Uh, and so these language models have trouble picking up on this implicit information uh, without fine tuning. And uh, this can be illustrated by the black sheep problem. Uh, that is the term black sheep occurs frequently within text, whereas uh, you'll rarely see a white sheep. Uh, often that's just referred to as a sheep. And so if, you're, if you ask a language model what color are sheep, it's most likely to predict that they're black. 
And so there's this um, lack of uh, explicit, in, uh, or there's a large amount of implicit information in natural language that uh, is thought of as common sense. Uh, and so to address this issue, uh, there's been a number of uh, people developing common sense knowledge-based knowledge graphs, including researchers at the Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence. Um, and so they created Atomic, uh, which is one of these common sense knowledge graphs. And you can see from the graph on the right that this contains a variety of uh, relationships. Um, particularly important to our use case are those uh, social uh, related to social interaction. Um, and uh, if you're interested in uh, looking more into this, I provide the QR code at the bottom right, which is the same as the one on the next slide, um, which is uh, another model developed at AI2, uh, which is our method, uh, which is that by fine tuning language models on these common sense triples uh, within the knowledge graph, we're better able to predict mental states of users directly from text. Um, for example, the user might indicate that their mind is racing. And so comment might infer, or will, will infer that the caregiver uh, might need to focus. Uh, they might be trying to sleep. Uh, they might have anxiety um, and they want to relax. Uh, and so using these um, um, predictions, we're able to uh, better respond to the user. And so how do we incorporate all this uh, into a dialogue system, uh, particularly using Raza? So uh, we incorporate uh, the comment, uh, the comment uh, model uh, encoder as a featureizer that inherits from the language model featureizer within Raza. And then we decode the features of the comment featureizer in another custom NLU component uh, to add or remove mental states from our dialogue tracker. I've shared our configuration file on the right, which allows us to, which uh, also shows some of the parameters we, we, we pass to the model. For example, uh, the we uh, pass which pre-trained model uh, we want uh, prior to that fine tuning step. Um, for example, the default is, is GPT-2. And then the uh, second configuration is, well, wh which types of relations do we want to extract? And, and this allows us to, uh, to test different uh, um, different relations to figure out which ones best impact our performance on our on our task. Uh, and so the output of this pipeline is, is a number of mental state slots, as well as dense and sparse features similar to the end to end training models from uh, in Raza 2.2 uh, that are used in the downstream policies. And so that allows not only our empathetic policy, but also the TED policy uh, to leverage these. Uh, so uh, the next step uh, in our custom component uh, uh, architecture is the empathetic policy, uh, which in the case of Raza is a bit of a misnomer is in that we actually run this component within our uh, custom NLG server. Um, I added a QR code to that documentation in the bottom right. Um, and by using the NLG server, uh, as opposed to using it as a policy directly, we're able to post-process um, both custom actions as well as standard response templates uh, predicted by the dialogue state tracker, and also to apply additional actions on top of what's predicted by the dialogue policy. Um, second, second uh, and more related to the NLG component, uh, we actually apply stylistic changes, changes to the responses based on um, the style that is appropriate uh, given the, uh, the, the user's mental state and context. Uh, so we use a variety of techniques from clinical psychology to improve the user's effective state. Uh, Normalizing is one of these, and that technique is used to assure the client that their feelings and their situation are shared by others. Uh, this often comes as a relief uh, to clients who may otherwise feel abnormal or isolated. And this technique is generally applied as a motivational interviewing style, but is also applied more specifically in cognitive behavioral therapies uh, as a way to help the client gain awareness about how perceptions of events impact their emotional responses to those events. Affect labeling is, a, is, a, is another uh, method, which uh, may be surprising uh, to some, in that simply by putting uh, our feelings into words, uh, we can actually impact our affective state. And recent studies that incorporated fMRI brain scans 
uh, have found that affect labeling reduces activity in the amygdala, help, uh, helping to diffuse stress and agitation, uh, while shifting it instead to the left prefrontal cortex, which is used for uh, planning and emotion regulation. So some situations are still better handled by a human agent, and a smooth transition is essential to ensuring a continued positive experience for the customer. Um, this requires that knowledge be transferred from the bot to the human agent. And so this is why uh, we try to use as much as possible beyond just interpretability, or well, it is for the interpretability purpose, some explicit representation in those, those states uh, so that we can pass this along to the, um, um, the care team who will respond back to the patient. Uh, in addition, we use the same mental state information to prioritize our message queue. Uh, which helps our clinical team uh, in uh, responding to those at most need of uh, or distress uh, so we can get uh, um, help to them as quickly as possible. Uh, additionally, uh, on the right, you'll see uh, we keep track of what's state of the dialogue. So using the dialogue state tracker, where are we within the dialogue? And so that way, there's no repeated information needing to occur, and the agent can jump around uh, throughout the uh, dialogue by um, to review that uh, based on those steps. Uh, so in summary, empathy can drastically change a user's experience with the system, uh, and empathy can be enhanced with AI, both in human agents and chatbots. Uh, this is all possible through an extraordinary team of researchers and students at the University of Washington. So I'd like to thank all of them, as well as our advisors and sponsors. And uh, here's my contact info, as well as the URL for COCO. Uh, my primary method of interaction is through LinkedIn. Uh, so I've included my username as well as a direct link uh, to my profile through the QR code.